President Trump visits Europe and makes a lot of waves and a lot of news. Former Assistant Secretary of State P.J. Crowley, he joins me to talk about that, North Korea, and a whole lot more. Then transit troubles, they're set to kick into high gear this coming Monday. That when major repairs take place at Penn Station. Everyone in our region will be impacted. We'll take a look at what commuters will face and the political implications for many, including the governor and mayor of New York. Also, Senate Republicans still trying to forge ahead with a health care plan. Are they any closer to a vote than they were last week? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Thursday evening. Well, President Trump, he kicked off his European tour this morning in Poland. He met with the Polish president, had a press conference, gave a speech. We'll discuss that in a minute. Then the president headed off to Germany for the upcoming G20 meeting of the countries with the world's largest economies. And he met, among others, with Chancellor Angela Merkel. And they discussed everything from North Korea to the Middle East to the economy, and they shook hands. Why is that important? Well, it's because when Merkel visited the White House this past March, it was to awkward to say the least when they stared at each other without shaking hands. Now, while President Trump and Chancellor Merkel were pressing the flesh, demonstrators, they were clashing with police. There were anti-Trump protesters, also anti-capitalist protesters, who typically show up at the World Economic Summits. All the while, President Trump planning to meet with Vladimir Putin tomorrow. That is the most anticipated event of the week by far, and it's a week that's already been quite eventful. And for more on all this, who better to ask than our next guest, P.J. Crowley, former Assistant Secretary of State and author of Redline, American Foreign Policy in a Time of Fractured Politics and Failing States. P.J., always good to talk to you. Thank you. Hello, Rich. A pleasure. All right. I got about five things I heard the president say, and I want to share them with our audience and get your reaction. And only five, right? But the first one was on the president specifically talking about meddling in the election and the Russians. Well, I think it was Russia, and I think it could have been other people in other countries. Uh, could have been a lot of people interfered. I've said it very, I said it very simply. I think it could very well have been Russia, but I think it could well have been other countries, and I won't be specific. But uh, I think a lot of people interfere. I think it's been happening for a long time. It's been happening for many, many years. All right, so maybe it's not the 400-pound guy in the basement that it was before, but it's all the other kids. It's not just Russia. In context with his meeting with Putin tomorrow, uh, what was your reaction to what you just heard? Well, I, I, I think it, uh, it, it is, it, it, it's just amazing that he can't bring himself, you know, to say that Russia did interfere you know, in the 2016 campaign. I mean, it's quite apart from the result. President, you know, Trump was elected. He is the president. But I, I think it is, it, it is a point of vulnerability that potentially Vladimir Putin, you know, can try to exploit. You know, so you had the president today who basically said, you know, well, some of my intelligence community made this conclusion, but we just really don't know. You know, the real aspect is we do know, and I think it's going to be very important for uh, President Trump to say to Putin, we know what you did uh, and don't do it again. And to that point, PJ, the, these next couple bites to me is even more shocking than what we just heard. On foreign soil, soil, the president criticized his predecessor, former President Barack Obama, as well as the aforementioned intelligence agencies, all within the span of a couple minutes. Take a listen. He did nothing about it. Why did he do nothing about it? He was told it was Russia by the CIA, as I understand it. It was well reported. And he did nothing about it. They say he choked. Well, I don't think he choked. I think what happened is he thought Hillary Clinton was going to win the election. And he said, let's not do anything about it. I remember when I was sitting back li listening about Iraq, weapons of mass destruction, how everybody was 100% sure that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Guess what? That led to one big mess. They were wrong. So, in a span of a couple of minutes, he pivots from, well, we don't know if it was Russia. If it was, it was all the other folks. And oh, by the way, if it was Russia, it's the former president's fault. He's the one who choked about it. Don't blame the Kremlin or me. And by the way, those intelligence agencies, even though 16, 17 of them say it was the Russians, don't trust them anyway because they're the same ones who brought you Iraq. Uh, I mean, stunning 
uh, you know, the, the blanket well, I, of stuff I, that he I, threw. I, I, I doubt that President Trump is the is is the only president ever to go overseas, you know, and criticize the policies of his predecessors. I think, you know, we have to remember that politics is a contact sport, you know, and and there's no longer this divide between the domestic, you know, and the foreign. I, I think what you're seeing here is, is is an interesting dynamic. You have in the speech, um, you know, President Trump on script, who is is saying that look, there are extreme forces. Uh, you know, who are trying to challenge uh, and, and disrupt the Western liberal order. That's a very good and strong message and well received, you know, in Poland. And then you have the unscripted, you know, Donald Trump in this press encounter uh, and, and, you know, saying things that uh, I, I think will be, you know, disconcerting to European audiences, you know, and American audiences as well. I know it's always dangerous to treat the president's words as thought or serious, but if you take it literally, God forbid, he's saying we shouldn't trust our own intelligence community to two ends. God forbid there's a major event, PJ. But secondly, you know, that's the wrong group of organizations I would have thought he would have learned by now to pick a fight with. Well, I, I mean, it is it is disconcerting. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's part of, um, of the challenge that the president has had in shifting from campaigning as an outsider, you know, to governing as the leader of the most powerful country you know, on earth. And, and th th this adjustment period, you know, is, is still ongoing. The United States intelligence services are highly respected around the world. Uh, I mean, there's some concerns in Europe about some of their activities in, in recent years, but, by this, but, but this was something I think that will be noticed here in Washington and, and will be, make it much more difficult for him you know, to reach a, a reasonable understanding with the agencies that he now leads. Obviously, not just news here about Europe or about meddling in the elections, but also about what uh, he said about North Korea. Here's uh, the next clip. As far as North Korea is concerned, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't like to talk about what I have planned, but I have some pretty severe things that we're thinking about. For you, PJ, and we've shown, you know, a graph here of how many servicemen, let alone American interests, we have right over the DMZ. Um, what can he do here? I mean, I know that there was a promise they wouldn't uh, be permitted to get uh, the kind of long-range weapons uh, that they've threatened to do, but can he do more than sanctions, and would you be scared if he did? Well, you know, Richard, all eyes are on the meeting tomorrow between, you know, President Trump and President Putin. But I think perhaps the most consequential exchange during the G20 may well be whatever conversation he has with President you know, Xi Jinping. If you go back to his tweet earlier in the week, you know, where he said, you know, as we're dealing with an escalating crisis you know, in North Korea, you know, we find out that trade between China and North Korea is actually expanding. And so I, I think the real question is, is he going to lean into you know, President Xi Jinping, he certainly positioned himself, you know, to do that. Um, but is, you know, uh, the, the major question from a policy standpoint, because the military op options are there, but they're awful, and any solution to North Korea has to go through Beijing, is he willing to put the U.S.-China relationship at risk, you know, to really force China, you know, to get, uh, get control of its banks and its businesses, that are, are doing business with Pyongyang uh, and helping at least the elites in North Korea prosper. You know, finally, PJ, I've been out of the country for the last couple of weeks, af actually in the African continent. It was amazing. Some of the questions and reaction I got, all they had to do with Trump, and it wasn't on the flattering side. But you've made a lot of your life um, uh, as it relates to dealing with foreign diplomacy and certainly have a lot of friends left in the State Department. My, my question to you is, for the audience who says, oh, well, this is a lot of rhetoric, what kind of impact is it happening in global capitals around the world? And is it a damage that's going to have consequences beyond just however many years he's in the White House? Well, it's going to have consequences. I mean, we're, in a way, we're seeing the diminishment of presidential rhetoric. Uh, you know, ha having been the State Department spokesman, you know, today, if I were in that position, I'd wonder whether, you know, any statement or any briefing, you know, could survive the next presidential tweet.
you know, I, I, I think I think there 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 is a there is a learning curve and a, and a, and 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 presidents do grow into the job over time. But but the real question here is after six months, is there now a a process behind you know American foreign policy, and will the president you know follow that process and and heed the recommendations? of his uh, national security team. And, and, and that's where we saw today, you know, the two Donald Trumps. He delivered a very good speech uh, with a very good message that will be well received in Eastern Europe. At the same time, you know, he shows the same inclinations that, that I think le le you know, leave, you know, many of our allies in Europe and around the world scratching their head over exactly what the U.S. policy is and the direction that President Trump is going to take the United States in the future. Well, uh, give a free plug here because you got a book on the very subject at the, at the very time. It's called Red Line. It's talking about our policy, foreign policy, that is in a time of both fractured politics and failing states. Uh, PJ, as always, thank you. Richard, a pleasure. And coming up next, everybody, the summer of hell starts in a few days. Those are the words of the governor of New York. That's when service gets severely restricted at Penn Station. It's going to impact everybody in our region. We're going to tell you what to expect and also take a look at who will get blamed for this mess. Trust me, somebody will. Will it be Governor Cuomo or Bill de Blasio? We'll discuss straight ahead.